Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. On behalf of Delaware War Machine, we wish you all the best in 2024. We're very excited to take a look and play the brand new Steamroller packet that was released in January. We're going to break down some of the new unique rules, terminology, and each individual scenario. Information for this video was taken from Privateer Press's Steamroller 2024 packet. So what exactly is Steamroller? Steamroller is the official competitive tournament format for Privateer Press's miniature wargame War Machine. Per the document's definition, Steamroller is ideal for groups of eight or more players and promotes fast and furious play, while stressing the ability to adapt to a variety of scenarios. Typical tournament point sizes are 50, 75, or 100 points, with 75 and 100 being the most common format. Steamroller events require a player to bring one army list, with a second army list optional. If a player is bringing more than one army list, the second list must be led by a different leader than the first list. An army point total cannot exceed the point size chosen for the event and cannot be more than four points under. Winning conditions consist of a scenario victory, death clock, or leader assassination. As with previous Steamroller, the game will automatically end at the end of the seventh round when players will tally their scores to see who has the most points to determine a winner. Killbox has also remained the same in most scenarios at 12 inches from your starting edge. Scoring starts on the second player's second turn. Some big Steamroller 2024 changes include a point difference of three or more at the start of your opponent's turn to win by scenario. This means every player gets the opportunity to respond to their opponent's scoring before the game ends. Deployment zones have also been updated to first player deploying at six inches, while second player will deploy at 11 inches. Additionally, when measuring the placement of an objective, you will measure the edge of the objective, not the center. Terrain has also seen some big changes. The recommended number of terrain pieces per table is 10 to 14. Some basic guidelines include no placement within three inches of a board edge or within 10 inches of a player's board edge. At minimum, four line of sight blocking pieces and six inch minimum between two obstructions. You want to ensure all base sizes can move between obstructions. It is also recommended that a table should include a minimum of one hazard such as a burning earth or acid pool. Scattered terrain has also been added to the game. This can be anything like open graves, a tree, statue, or a set of boxes. Three pieces of scatter terrain equals one terrain piece towards the table's total. Like defenses, if an 80mm or 120mm base comes in contact with a piece of scatter terrain, it is removed from the table. For tournament organizers out there, if you're having your players set up their own objectives and terrain needs to be shifted, players may make these changes without the presence of a judge. If terrain movement cannot be agreed upon by the players, the TO will determine the final placement of the terrain. Review the official steamroller document for all details. Circle and rectangle zones are gone! We have a brand new set of scenario elements which come in a pack of five and can be ordered on Privateer Press's website. The pack includes a 50mm, 40mm, and 30mm objective. New to Steamroller 2024 is the 20mm flag and cache objective. It is important to remember that objectives are not considered models or block line of sight. Models can advance, be pushed, or slam through an objective if they have enough movement to move completely past it. If a scenario has a moving objective, the objective ignores models and terrain when doing so as long as it has the movement to move completely past any model or obstacle that would prevent its final placement. A player secures a 50mm zone if they own one or more leader models, cohort models, or battle engines within 3 inches of the objective and no opponent can test it. Inert Warjacks and Wild War Beasts cannot secure zones. A player secures a 40mm zone if they own one or more leader models or units within 3 inches of it and no opponent can test it. For a unit to secure a zone, all models in the unit still in play must be within the same zone. A player secures a 30mm zone if they own one or more leader models or solo models within 3 inches of it and no opponent can test it. An objective is contested if one of your opponent's models are within 3 inches of the zone, leader models, inert warjacks, and wild warbeasts cannot contest. 
Disabled models cannot contest. Looking at you in human resolve. Steamroller 2024 introduces a new flag and objective terrain. Flags are represented by a 20 millimeter objective piece. If a scenario has a flag before deployment, starting with player one, choose a piece of terrain within five inches of the 20 millimeter flag. Place the flag on, in, or next to the piece of terrain to represent that it is now an objective terrain piece. This terrain can be anything such as a forest, hill, guard tower, house, or wall. The only exceptions are hazards and scatter terrain. You can never place a flag on a hazard or a piece of scatter terrain. If no valid terrain piece exists, leave the flag at the starting location as shown in the scenario. The flag is no longer a token and becomes an obstruction objective piece of terrain. Unlike other objectives or the cache, models cannot freely move through the flag. If an object terrain piece is destroyed, such as the guard tower, the player that destroyed the terrain piece places its flag anywhere touching its edge. Once complete, remove the terrain from play. The flag is now an obstruction terrain piece. A player secures a piece of objective terrain, like a forest, by having two or more models within the area of the terrain. Alternatively, if a player selected something like a house, they will need two models within two inches of the piece of terrain to score it. A piece of terrain is considered contested if one of your opponent's models are within the area of the terrain or within two inches of the piece of terrain. Just like other objectives, leader models, inert warjacks, and wild war beasts cannot contest. The 20mm cache is another newcomer to Steamroller 2024. A player can only score off their opponent's cache. To score the cache, you must have a friendly model forfeit its combat action while base to base with your opponent's cache. When a cache is scored, remove it immediately from the game. Remember, a unit cannot receive a charge order and have one member pick up the cache. You must forfeit a model's entire combat action to score a cache. Now that we have all the vocabulary and updates out of the way, let's look at the six new scenarios in Steamroller 2024. Scenario 1, Recon Mark IV. This scenario includes two flags, two caches, and two 30mm objectives. This scenario remains static throughout the game with no moving objectives. Recon Mark IV is an excellent introductory scenario to Steamroller 2024. Scenario 2, Battle Lines. This scenario includes two flags, two 40mm and two 30mm objectives. This scenario introduces moving objectives. At the end of each scoring turn, after points have been calculated, the active player must elect to move one of any player's objective three inches towards their opponent's table edge. You cannot pick the same objective your opponent chose the turn before. Scenario 3, Wolves at Our Heels. This scenario includes two 50mm, two 40mm, and two cache objectives. Wolves at Our Heels not only has a moving objective, but has an increasing kill box. This one can be a little spicy and has a lot going on. At the end of a scoring turn, when a player controls either 40mm objective after scoring, they must move that objective 3 inches towards their opponent's board edge. Additionally, starting on the first player's third turn, the kill box increases by 2 inches at the beginning of each of the first player's turns. What this looks like is a kill box of 12 inches at the end of round 2, to 14 inches on round 3, 16 on round 4, 18 on round 5, 20 on round 6, and an incredibly dicey measurement of 22 inches at round 7. If that wasn't enough spice, we have one more thing. At the end of round 4, if a player's 40mm objective is closer to their opponent's board edge than the other player's 40mm objective, immediately score 3 victory points. If there is a tie measurement for both players, these points are not awarded. Scenario 4 Payload. Payload introduces two 50mm, two 40mm, two flags, and one 30mm objective. The 30mm objective will be set up on the second player's side only. In this scenario, when a player secures a 50mm objective after scoring, they must move that objective 
three inches towards their opponent's objective terrain or flag. For each 30 millimeter or 40 millimeter objective scored by a player, that player may move their 50 millimeter objective an additional one inch during this movement. Payload has the special made to haul scenario rule. After a player's own 50 millimeter objective is moved at the end of their turn, that player may elect one cohort model to move five inches directly towards their 50 millimeter objective. In the payload scenario, think of your 50 millimeter as an explosive you're pushing towards your opponent. Why might you ask? If a player's 50 millimeter objective ends its movement within two inches within their opponent's objective terrain, that player immediately scores five victory points. Remove that 50 millimeter objective from play. Additionally, remove the flag from that opponent's objective terrain. It is no longer classified as objective terrain and can no longer be scored. If it was just a flag, remove the flag. Scenario 5, Two Fronts. This asymmetrical scenario, players will field two 50mm, two 40mm, and one 30mm objective. The 30mm objective will be deployed on the second player's second side only. Like Recon Mark IV, this scenario is static in that the objectives will not move. However, if a player secures both 40mm or 50mm at the end of a scoring turn, they will score two points per objective instead of one. Scenario 6, Invasion. The last scenario features two 50mm and one 40mm, one 30mm on the second player's side, and two flag objectives. At the end of a scoring turn, a player may move each of their opponent's objectives they have secured five inches in any direction. The objective cannot end its movement within three inches of a board edge. The first player to end an opponent's objective within their own deployment zone immediately scores five points. This method can only be scored once per player. Note that each player's flag location is on the opposite side of the table from their deployment zone. Well, that pretty much summarizes all the big changes in Steamroller 2024. Don't forget to check out the full Steamroller 2024 document on the War Machine app or on Privateer Press's official website. What do you think of the new packet? What are some things that you are most concerned or excited about? Let us know in the comments below. See you at the tables.